Microsoft announced Windows 365 this week at Inspire. With this announcement comes a new way to deliver remote desktops as a software as a service platform built on Azure Virtual Desktop. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Sorelto's. Windows 365 was announced this week and it's a significant addition to virtual desktop options in Azure. There's a limited amount of information available about Windows 365. In this video, we'll break down what it is and how it differs from Azure Virtual Desktop. Keep in mind that this is a new service and the information available may not be complete and may change as Windows 365 becomes available. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. And if you'd like to learn more about Azure Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Azure Virtual Desktop on Udemy.com. Reviewing the announcement, there are two words used to describe each virtual desktop solution. Flexibility for Azure Virtual Desktop and simplicity for Windows 365. That's a good starting point to understand how Windows 365 fits in the product stack. Azure Virtual Desktop offers flexibility in how it's deployed and managed. There are pooled host pools with multi-session OSs, such as Windows 10 multi-user, and personal host pools that create a one-to-one -one relationship between users and computers. Along with Windows 10, we can deploy Windows 7 in Azure Virtual Desktop or use a server-based OS for the session host. That's helpful for organizations dependent on RDS Cal licensing. Admittedly, I've not heard of any organization using a server OS for session host, but it's an option. Azure Virtual Desktop integrates with Citrix and VMware, and it's priced based on compute resource consumption. That makes shutting down those idle session hosts very important. So how does this compare with Windows 365? As a software as a service offering, you don't have to worry about management details, such as configuring pooled or personal host pools. The majority of the configuration and management is taken care of for you. It provides desktops based on Windows 10 or Windows 11 once available. Management is integrated into Microsoft Endpoint Management or MEM. It's not managed from the Azure portal like Azure Virtual Desktop. At least that wasn't shown in any of the examples I found. The MEM integration is significant because it moves the management away from Azure administration to endpoint administration, a good move on Microsoft's part and a clear indication of how this product is getting positioned in the market. As a software as a service product, Windows 365 is licensed per user. We pay for a user per desktop, just like how Office or other 365 products are licensed. No more deallocating idle session hosts to save money. This is a much more predictable pricing model that many organizations will welcome. Windows 365 also has performance analytics available out of the box and a watchdog service that provides a status of key services to make sure the environment is healthy. From a technical standpoint, this is more of an evolution than a revolution. Not to understate the significance, these are huge improvements for organizations that don't need the flexibility of Azure Virtual Desktop. With Azure Virtual Desktop, we were left facing some significant management issues, like how do we patch the session host? Do we deploy new updated session hosts or update in place? Or manage applications, do we bake the application into the image or use a product like Endpoint Configuration Manager to deploy the application? Windows 365 gives us an answer to those questions with the integration into Microsoft Endpoint Management, and that is significant. On the other hand, there's still a requirement for a VNet with custom DNS configurations, and Windows 365 is still dependent on Active Directory domain services. For many, that will require connectivity to an on-premises network. VNet connectivity and AD domain services has been two of the biggest hurdles for organizations adopting Azure Virtual Desktop. And also, the AD domain services requirement has been one of the biggest complaints. With that said, Microsoft also announced public preview support of Azure AD Join with Azure Virtual Desktop. It's easy to see the direction Microsoft is going, and I predict an Azure AD Join Intune Manage Windows 365 option is in the near future. That covers the basics of how Windows 365 compares to Azure Virtual Desktop, at least based on the information available. Stay tuned for more to come, much more. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.